Hello friends, there are so many ways we can retouch or soften skin in Adobe Photoshop but in this video we are going to be looking at how we can use camera raw filter for skin retouching in Adobe Photoshop. This is Twisted Creative, Larry Bimana is my name. If it's your first time on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that I don't miss any of the next video. Without wasting much time, let's get into it. This is Photoshop and this is the image we are going to be using. So I strongly advise if you want to do anything like exposure correction, removal of blemishes and all that, you have to do it, save it, then close the image from Photoshop and bring it into Photoshop again. The reason why I said that is that we are going to be making use of history brush, this history brush. So what history brush does is take it back to the stage one, take it back to initial stage so it's going to be taking it back to where you started if your selection is not perfect and you don't want this effect that you are going to be adding to this stuff on some parts of your image you have to use history brush to erase to erase them from those area or reduce them from that area i hope you get that so we are going to be starting by uh, correcting this exposure if you take a look at this image now you notice that we don't really have much work to do on exposure like if you ask me i'm not going to correct exposure to affect the entire image what i'm only going to do is that i'm going to throw some light mostly the neck region is like too dark and if you take a look at the hair it's not that exposed because it's like the 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 black is just too much let's expose the hair a little and the part of the neck the neck region so we have to go to the adjustment layer and choose levels then let's pick it up a bit like this at least we can see the hair very well now then we use our control i we we'll make sure the layer mask is selected use our control i to invert the layer mask then we'll go to our brush tool we have to make sure we are using soft round brush that means your hardness has to be at zero then you have to go to your opacity like 60 for opacity and 60 for flow is okay then you have to increase or reduce your brush when necessary so we are using it on this area now so i'm going to reduce then i can take some part of the face to make it brighter like the strong shadows area we have to reduce the shadow in the eyes area we have to reduce the shadow there with this levels adjustment layer so we have to do it this way like here we need to improve the we need to improve the the exposure here by something like this at least we can reduce the brush and take it in here and you don't need to be that perfect i think it's okay we are okay with this let's check the before this is before and this is after let's just assume that we are true with the exposure i have to select the first one then hold my control or my shift to select the next one then use control e to merge both of them together so we we'll have them as one file now one layer so the next thing we are going to be doing is like we are going to remove the blemishes i know the image is not that bad so let's go and pick up our patch tool then we can zoom in then we have to circle around those areas that we are seeing all this stuff circle around here then move it to some somewhere nearby that is better than that spot okay so we have to zoom in and do something like that here also i think we are good here then yeah it's not that bad i think we are almost done the image is not that bad So you have to circle around it then take it to the po the location you want to copy then you let go we are done with removal of blemishes let's go to image adjustments then to brightness and contrast then we can take it up a bit and let's take i believe this is okay then hit okay let's assume that we're done with exposure and removal of blemishes then we have to save this image close it and reopen again the reason why i i advise to do that because if you try this history brush now let's go to let's go and pick the history brush which we are going to be using on after the camera raw stuff if we 
drag the history brush like this you notice that we are taking the image to the dark very dark image we knew initially let's use our control z to remove that stuff here let's use control shift s to save the image on the computer then let's look for location let's save it close to this add something to this let's add a to the number then save so we have to close up this image we have to use ctrl w to close up this image then we have the, this version of it then drag it and drop it on photoshop like so we have to use our ctrl j to duplicate so we are going to be using it to see the before and after let's rename this to be main okay we have to select the main image then go to filter then camera raw filter this is camera raw and this is the image on camera raw filter take a look at this area this side of the screen you notice that we have these sliders then this stuff and this stuff this slider is the general settings and this is the spot removing stuff and this other one is selection which is masking then if you select this you notice that we have some options here that is following it for the second line if you look at the first set the second set for the third set you see color range you have to click on this color range if you navigate to the image you notice that your pointer is going to change into eyedropper and this eyedropper is going to help you select the area based on color then we are going to be looking at skin color which is we are going to be selecting the skin color so as to apply this effect directly on the skin instead of applying it to the entire image then brushing some area as or look making the image look like mess so we are going to be selecting this stuff with this and the target is just five they gave you five times to select your stuff we are going to be using the five to select the mid tone the highlights and the shadows let's start by let's zoom in and see properly let's assume that this spot is going to be the highlight let's click on this spot then we have it selected it's saying extra magenta on the image but don't be confused about this color if you look at this red circle here you notice that it's color if you click on it you can change to you can change the color to any color that is not going to match what you are trying to edit let's say this thread is this thread has indicated that this area has been selected if you take a look at if you take a look at it notice that the area has been selected that is the red but if you change it to blue once you see blue on your image that means those area has been selected look at the blue then if you check the greens the same thing happens let's leave it on red let's hit ok if you take a look at the areas you notice that anywhere you have this ss red on has been selected so let's go in there and select more areas now we've selected the some something close to the highlights then let's go to this spot and this spot is going to be something like mid-tone there about let's hold our shift and click on this you notice that the red becomes more intense then we we'll check this area it's a little bit darker than this spot i just selected let's include it so let's go and check somewhere else now we have three we've used three out of five then let's go to the neck region which is very very dark we can click on this then we'll notice that the some parts of the hair and some parts of this clothing has been affected that means all this area that we are seeing this extra red is going to be affected when we try to adjust and create those effects we are going to create now so you can mark these areas maybe later you come with your history brush and wipe them off those areas let's zoom in properly and see the most shiny place and add it then we we'll notice that we have it selected we have to go to the effect tab have to go down go down this is lights and this is color and this is effect so if you check the effect we have texture clarity and the haze then we have to bring the texture down immediately you start adjusting the color will go away then we have to bring it down depending on your liking depending on your liking if you want it smoother than this you can bring it down to the ending but for the now i think i should be at let's say 85 or there about minus 85 let's say minus 85 
then the clarity you have to bring the clarity down if you take it up it's going to be looking like mess if you bring it down it's going to be smoothening the image thereby reducing some details but it's going to be useful yes okay let's go down a bit let's go down a bit i think it should be okay by minus let's say okay let's say minus 20 should be okay minus 20 should be okay for the clarity then the dehaze we are going to leave that we are not going to touch that then we'll go to the detail tab then we can take the sharpness up take it up so you can see we are recovering some of the details with this sharpness so we can push it up to an extent then if you zoom in you notice we have a lot of details back then let's assume that the stuff is back like this look at what happened then let's put it on zero where it normally is then we can push it forward to to make to create that sharpness there i think 80 should be okay plus 80 should be okay then take a look we are not going to add to reduce noise we are going to take it to minus and possibly you can take it to the ending to minus 100 there but more reduce you can reduce it also to down and then this difference is a kind of feathering it's a kind of feathering something like trying to separate some areas with smooth transition we don't need that transition here because we already have our selection so let's bring the fringe the, the fringe down to stuff like this to minus 100 then it's almost okay if you take a look at the image it's looking beautiful already then we have to go to the general adjustments click on this then we have to go to detail tab again so we have to push sharpening a bit so we have to push it to an extent i think it should be okay like this so we are not going to stop here let's just see the before and after let's see check and see what we have here let's move it to this direction so you have to check the difference isn't that amazing already okay let's hit okay you can see what we have here see the before and this is the after let's hit okay i think we are okay with camera raw filter then it's loading as you can see wow so let's check the before and after here so let's hold our alt and see this is before and this is after this is before this is after so the next thing we do is that we are going to pick our history brush and remove this effect from the areas we don't want them on we have to take our history brush then go to our settings make sure we are using soft round brush make sure the hardness is at zero opacity should be at 100 and the flow should be at 100 then you go to the lip area and remove that effect from the lip then we can generally go to the back of the image let's say the background and we can click and use it to wipe the background if there is any effect on there then we notice that the time we the time we adjusting we notice that there are some colors here so we have to clean all this area to make sure those areas are not affected even the hair should not be affected then let's zoom in again and let's go to window action this is action i have this eyes and teeth whitening which i'm going to be sharing soon then let's click on it and let's pick our brush to opacity is is at 60 and the flow is at 60 we can reduce the brush to fit the eyes then we can paint on the eyes to remove the red part of the eyes you don't have to clean it all because most of these parts are naturally reddish in nature so if you have the teeth open you can see clean up the teeth like this white is too much for the eyes we can reduce the opacity let's say 60 percent should be okay let's not be confused we are done with the skin softening as you can see we have the skin already softening this is before let's say this is before and this is after this is before this is after then the other things we need to do is just to 
enhance the image just like bonus tip for us we have to enhance and make it look more professional let's go to adjustment layer icon and click then we'll choose curves then we'll have to bring down the shadows like this and use our control i to invert the layer then pick our brush to depending on what you can handle 10 is okay for opacity then flow 10 is also okay then we can go in there we can reduce our brush size and increase our brush size and manually apply our burning So we are done with the burning, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves again. Then this time we are going to be pulling the highlights up like so and use our control I to invert the layer. You can add highlights to the lip. Let's see the before and after, the general before and after of this image. So this is, let's hold on our odds and say this is before and this is after. This is before and after. This is before and after. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. Like those of us that are scared of frequency separation using Misa brush or using lasso tool and it's time consuming. This is very simple and very fast. Even amateur can do this. Isn't that amazing? That is it for today. If you find it interesting, helpful, or useful, let us know in the comment section telling us the area it has helped, the area it has not, and the area we need to improve on. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Thanks for watching this video. Creative Pro, keep on creating. Just keep on creating. Continue creating. See you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.